Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Senna Spider ST1 Intercom. Now, it might seem a bit odd, but I'm going to start this video by explaining what this device isn't. This isn't a Bluetooth intercom. It does have Bluetooth, but it doesn't use it to connect to other intercoms. This is an intercom that connects to others via mesh, which is a different kind of comms technology. And this one has Bluetooth connectivity to hook up to devices like your phone and your sat nav. So if you want this device to let you connect with other riders who have a Bluetooth intercom already, then this one's really not for you. So now that's out of the way, let's focus on what this unit will do. It will communicate with other riders using the same system or other center intercoms that communicate via mesh technology. Mesh is the better way of communicating. Normally it's found in the more expensive comm systems. It has a superior range to Bluetooth and it's quicker and easier to reconnect if you happen to fall out of range with the other rider. This one particularly is quite a cost effective option. As we record this, the Spider ST1 costs 179 quid for a single unit and it's 319 for a pack of two. So you'll get the tech that's used in Senna's premium units without splashing out as much cash. Now the ST1 is a pretty simple unit to use and it has a jog dial and then there are three buttons. The jog dial is a rotating control wheel and a button in one. So you rotate it to perform certain commands like reducing or increasing the volume and it's also a button and it can be used as a combination of the two. So pressing it in and turning it simultaneously. The button on the top is the intercom button and then the one on the back is the phone button. Then there's a pull out aerial on the top that extends the range of the mesh intercom. There are much better people than me to do a how-to guide on this unit, but the basics are that you press the jog dial button and the phone button together to turn the unit on. If you've previously paired this to your phone, then it'll automatically reconnect in future as long as you've got Bluetooth switched on on your phone. If you haven't paired it before, the intercom automatically goes into pairing mode when it's first switched on, or you can press and hold the jog dial and the phone button together, hold them down, and that puts it into pairing mode. Once that's done, the unit effectively becomes a headset and a remote control for your phone. So when you want to connect the intercom to another rider, you press the button on top once, and it goes into what's called open mesh mode. This means the unit will automatically connect with all other compatible units that are within range without the need to pair them. Senna say you could have a virtually limitless number of units all connected to Open Mesh at one time and they can all communicate through that system. There are nine channels within Open Mesh, so if you and your riding partner or your partners all select the same channel, you'll be able to communicate with each other and only other riders who are in that channel. And if you want to make life really complicated, you can navigate between channels. So that effectively means you can have different chats going on with different riders all at the same time. As well as open mesh, you can go into group mesh mode. So where open mesh allows any and all users of compatible intercoms on the same channel to talk to each other, group mesh is limited to people who've chosen to be connected to each other. So where there's no limit on the number of riders in an open mesh channel at one time, you can only have 24 riders in a group mesh chat. To set up a group, you press and hold the intercom button for five seconds. And if your friend does that at the same time, you both then go into a group. And no one else can join that group without the permission of one of the current members. The range for comms, Senna claim it to be 1.2 miles, but that's when you're in clear sight of each other in open country. That will reduce significantly in busier areas and if you get obstacles between the two bikes. I used a Spider ST1 in a few different helmets to connect bike to bike with another ST1 unit and I found the range to be good. There's no way the range Senna claims is realistic in normal use, but there is one part of my commute that's a long straight road and I found that we could get our units a good distance apart before the connection started to break up. It was around half a mile between the two units at that point, but if one of us went round a corner on a tree-lined road or there were buildings between us, then the signal would break down. The good thing about this is that the units automatically reconnected as soon as that signal was re-established between them, and not all intercoms do that. Sometimes you have to pull up and repair with each other once you've become disconnected. So in open mesh mode, I guess it's pretty obvious that it would auto reconnect as really it's always looking for other compatible units within that same open mesh channel. But I also tested it in group mode where the two intercoms had been specifically paired to each other and they were still able to reconnect without being put back into repairing mode. On the subject of range, it can extend as well if there are more riders in your group. In that situation, the units effectively use each other to daisy chain and you can then get up to five miles between six riders while maintaining communication between all six of them. I wasn't in a position to test the range using more than two units, so I can't comment from personal experience on what to expect when riding in a group like that. I did use this with my phone to make and take calls. Taking calls is easy enough. When you hear the phone ring, you press the phone button on the back to answer it. 
and you can also set it up with a voice control and that means you can loudly say hello or blow into the microphone that's in front of you and it'll answer the call for you. When it comes to making calls, you've got a couple of options. You can use the buttons on the unit to redial either the last number in your phone or one of three speed dials that you've set up using the Senna app that you download to your phone. The ST1 doesn't have much in the way of voice control built in, but pressing the phone button once will connect to the voice assistant on your phone. So that's Siri on Apple or Google Assistant on Android. And once you're through to that, you can then ask your phone to call someone from your contacts. I found that to work okay. My phone's an Android one and it was more reliable if I said first, make a call and then waited the, for the phone to ask who I wanted to call. You can also use the voice assistant to request music through apps like Spotify. There's no FM radio on this unit, but I use mine to connect to the radio online and I could get the voice assistant to open up BBC Sounds and choose the station that I wanted to play. Obviously, if you don't fancy using the voice assistant and you can just open up Spotify or BBC Sounds or any app like that before you start riding, set your music or your radio playing and it'll carry on once you've got going. Now, this unit has what Senna calls audio multitasking, and that makes an easier transition between different functions you've got on the go at the same time. So you could be in a bike to bike or rider to pillion intercom chat. You could have music playing and also have instructions coming through from your sat nav all at the same time. And the multitasking means the unit should switch seamlessly between them, automatically lowering the music volume when it detects conversation over the intercom or an instruction from the sat nav. Now, this is one area where I did struggle with the ST1. I could sort of get that multitasking to work, but I did find it a bit frustrating and it was easier to choose between music and intercom rather than letting the system try and shuffle between them. You can adjust the microphone sensitivity, which is the way to get that multitasking to work better. I did that, but I'd still need to experiment some more really before I could improve the way this functions to be absolutely ideal. But I would say this unit isn't an exception on that score as the other intercoms I've tried all struggle to switch smoothly from music to intercom and back again. So it's not like buying another more expensive unit than this one is a guarantee of getting one that will work really, really well on audio multitasking. Right, some general stuff about the ST1 if you're not gonna sit down and studiously read the spec sheet. Senna claim it will give it 11 and a half hours of talk time from a battery charge and it takes an hour and a half to fully charge it back up again. They also say a 20 minute fast charge will give you another three and a half hours of talk time. What I can say is that for my riding, which is a couple of hours each day, I can stick it on a charger every few days and it's always kept it going happily enough. It's never warned me the battery's getting low. Now for something that isn't on the spec sheet and that's weather protection. Senna make no mention at all of riding in the rain, whether you can, whether you can't, whether you should or whether you shouldn't. The ST1 is rated to IP65 apparently, which means it will resist low pressure water jets and spray as well as being dustproof. Some people out there say that means your warranty, which by the way lasts for two years on the ST1, won't be valid if you suffer water damage. What I can say is that I spoke to our returns team about it and they can only remember one case of a Senna unit being returned for water damage and we've sold a lot of Senna units. So I'd say it doesn't happen or at least you'll be very, very unlucky if water damage ever happens to you. In the box, you get both a sprung clamp mount, like fitted to this helmet here, and also a stick-on one. You slide the clamp between the lid shell and the protective liner, and if you can do that, that's the best way to go. But if not, you've got the self-adhesive option. The charging port is USB-C as well, so it's really easy to plug in using the same as you'd use on your phone to charge up the unit. The speakers offer HD quality, and they're 40 millimeters in diameter, so there's a good chance of those fitting in many of the recesses that helmet manufacturers leave inside for that purpose. The sound quality is good. It's better than the Senna 20S Evo I've used before, and I personally found it comparable to the really sought after JBL speakers that you get in a Cardo unit. I should say though, I'm not someone who's particularly sensitive to the quality of speakers. So if you are a connoisseur of audio quality, I get myself into a shop for a back-to-back -back demo before making a call on what to buy, rather than relying on my judgment. As well as the two different types of clamps, in the box you find a collection of pads, Velcro panels to attach them inside lids, and you also get a choice of two microphones. There's the wired mic for full face lids like this one, and then the boom mic that suits open face and flip fronts. There's also a data transfer cable. If you need to update the firmware, which you almost certainly will, then you need to use this cable. It might look like any old USB-C cable, but it's the one you need to hook the unit up to your computer for the firmware upgrade, and a normal USB-C charging cable won't do the job. Something else I'd say about this, and any intercom really, don't fit it to your helmet as soon as you get it. 
when you first get the unit, charge the battery, power it up, pair it to your phone, to your sat nav if you have one, and check it all connects up properly. Then read the manual, learn all the functions and which buttons and which combinations of buttons you need to press to make those functions work. It's much, much easier to learn all of that when you can see the thing in front of you and you can also read the manual. Once you've done that, all you have to do is transfer that knowledge to your memory, remember how to do it when it's hanging off the side of your head like it is on the helmet here. Another thing, one last thing that you need to really bear in mind with Senna, quite a few riders team up to buy a twin pack of these units between them, which saves a few quid. It's understandable, it's a good idea, saving a few quid. But if one of you has a problem with your unit and it needs to go back for inspection, then both units need to go back for inspection. So if something goes wrong with yours, your mate's gonna have to send his back as well. Not all intercom companies insist on that, but Senna do. Right, let's wrap up. This ST1 worked really well in my time using it. It's been an impressive piece of kit that I've been really happy to use. If you expect you're gonna to wanna to connect with riders who've got non-mesh units or systems made by other manufacturers such as Cardo, then you're best going for one of the more expensive units that can use Bluetooth or mesh to connect with each other, whereas this can only do mesh. But if you're looking for something where you know you're gonna be communicating with riders who have a Senna mesh-enabled comm system, then this is a great cost-effective option. It might be a simple case of only ever using two of these units, one for you, one for your pillion, or the rider you always go out with. And in that case, this is a really good option for a very good price. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Senna Spider ST1 mesh comm system. But with something this complicated, it almost certainly doesn't. And that's why there's a comment section below. So if you've got something you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop it in the comments. If I know the answer, I'll come back to you. If I don't, then I'll do my best to find out and then come back to you. Thanks for watching.